Okay, so today we're going to be talking about uh, fractions and decimals. Specifically, we're going to be talking about terminating versus non-terminating decimals, repeating versus non-repeating, and then we're going to talk about rational numbers versus irrational numbers, and then we're going to see what kind of decimal values can be expressed as rational numbers. Right, um, so let's get started. Um, so when we're talking about terminating versus non-terminating, uh, what we're talking about is really the question of does the decimal ever end? Right, so sometimes we have examples of decimals that end, okay, like terminating ones, so like 1.234. Okay, that's a terminating decimal because it has an ending. Okay, non-terminating decimals don't have an ending, so it would be like 1.34343434, or as an example, uh, another example would be pi, so 3.14159, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and so you can see what happens is the non-terminating decimal um, <coughs> can either be one that has a repeating uh, segment to it or a non-repeating segment, and that brings us into the next section. Okay, so um, obviously when we're talking about repeating versus non-repeating, uh, um, really we're talking about non-terminating decimals. Okay, and so um, what we're really looking at, and you're looking at, is, as I said above, is which ones repeat and which ones don't repeat, um, and then. Um, that leads us into rational numbers. Okay, now rational numbers are numbers that can be expressed as a ratio. So if we're looking at the root word of rational, um, what we're really looking at is ratio. Right, and so the real question is, can this number be expressed as a ratio of two other numbers? And I should say two other whole uh, numbers. Okay, and so there's a couple different things. Um, so what we can look at is we can look at terminating versus non-terminating, um, and uh, also re repeating versus non-repeating. Okay, so let's take a look at an example, and I'll talk about uh, terminating first. Now, the first thing to re remember is that, or to notice, is that any terminating decimal can be expressed as a fraction. So, let's take the one example that I used uh, earlier, 1.234. Okay, now this fraction, um, or this number, seems to be kind of, would be kind of difficult, or it may seem to be difficult to express as a fraction. But, what you should notice is that the last decimal is in the thousandths spot. And what that means is that this number could be represented as 1.234 or 1, 2, 3, 4 all over 1,000. Okay, and what would happen then is you would get 1.234. And that really works for any terminating decimal. It doesn't really matter which one. So, for instance, um, the decimal 0 0.8715, okay, because this is the last digit, this 5 is in the 10,000th spot, it could be represented as 8,715 all over 10,000. And that answer would be the same there. So, really, what this means is that all terminating decimals can be expressed as a fraction. Alright, so then the other thing we have to look at is, well, what about uh, repeating versus non-repeating for the non-terminating ones? Okay, so let's take a look here. So we have, let's take for instance a, let's look at a repeating decimal. Repeating decimal. So, um, let's say I have the number 3.535353, on and on and on. Okay, well, typically we don't write the number like that in mathematics. Okay, so what we do is we represent the number like this, and the bar over top of the 5.3 means that the 5.3 is repeating over and over again. Um, sometimes people make the mistake of doing it like this, 
um, and you shouldn't do that because that would mean that the, the four digits are repeating but they're really not four digits repeating it's just the two okay um, also sometimes people might do it like this okay and while technically not incorrect um, it's kind of a weird way of explaining it and because it's not really the five the three five that's repeating it's the five three that's repeating so don't do that either okay so given that we have a number like 3.53 repeating um, like this is it possible to express this as a decimal and the answer is absolutely it is okay so let's say for instance I select this as X and I say X is equal to 3.53 um, well what I could do is um, I need I can multiply this by 100. Okay, so 100x would be equal to 300 or 353.53 repeating. Okay, now the reason why I chose the number 100 is because there are two digits repeating here, and what I really want to do is move the 53 over to the side of the decimal and get it lined up here. And I'll show you why, because what I can do is I can move this equation, okay, like this. I can create a system of equations. Okay, so what happens here, and as you can see, if I had used um, a number like 10x, I would have had 35.35 repeating. All right. Now, I don't want this number because I don't, I don't have the 5-3 repeating matching up here, um, and it really wouldn't work for me, so um, that's why I have to multiply it by 100. Okay. Nonetheless, uh, once I've done that, what I can do is I can subtract one equation from the other. Okay, and so if I have 5-3 repeating, subtracting 5-3 repeating, these two values will always cancel each other out, which will leave a 0 .00. And that's why I had to have them match up. Okay, so I'd have the 3 minus 3. Okay, so 353 minus 3 would be 350. Alright, and then I'd have 100x minus x, which would leave 99x. Alright, this would mean that I'd get an equation that would say 99x is equal to 350. And that would mean that x was equal to 350 divided by 99. Now we saw over here, here though, and our initial assumption was that x was equal to 3.53 repeating. So if x is equal to 3.53 repeating and x is equal to 350 over 99, it follows then that these two values must also be the same. Okay, and then once we take away this x, we could say that 350 over 99 is equal to 3.53 repeating. Okay, and that's, that shows that this number can be expressed as a fraction. Okay. Alright, now using this technique, we could make any repeating decimal um, into a fraction. So what this means is that um, all repeating decimals can be expressed as a fraction. Okay, so what that means really is that terminating decimals can be expressed as fractions and repeating decimals can be uh, expressed as a fraction. So what does that leave? Okay, well what that means is that the only numbers that cannot be expressed as a fraction are the non-terminating and non-repeating decimals. Okay. These, I'm going to capitalize these, these are the irrational numbers. Now, I want to talk about the meaning of rational and rational again. 
a lot of times people associate the word rational with uh, logical or thinking and they think that irrational numbers don't seem to make sense because they're called irrational that's not what it means uh, the word rational like I said earlier uh, just talking about ratios so when something is uh, irrational it means it cannot be expressed as a ratio right not that it doesn't make sense okay that brings us into the last topic actually um, is number systems or number sets okay now this may be a review for you um, but we'll have to, we're going to talk about it anyways because it's pretty important okay so what we do is we start off with something called the natural numbers um, so the natural numbers um, basically are a number set that include all the numbers that most people would use starting from the whole numbers starting at 1 and going to infinity so that's 1 to infinity All right, and we usually represent that as being in a, a little domain there next to that we have the whole numbers okay now the whole numbers include the value of 0 and one thing I like to talk about is the power of zero. Zero is actually a really powerful number, but it's not always been well known. And in a lot of cultures, they didn't actually have zeros, uh, which is really quite amazing because um, without a zero, it makes things really difficult to um, do any real mathematics. Okay, so, anyway, so you have the whole numbers, which include all the natural numbers and also the value of zero. Following that, we have what are called the integers. Okay, now the integers are all the natural numbers, and all the whole numbers, and also the negative numbers. So this is negative 1 to negative infinity. Okay, that's not an 8, that's infinity. Alright, um, and then following that, we have, okay, well, what does this include, right? This includes all the whole numbers both positive and negative and the value is zero so really what's left what's left is all the numbers in between the whole numbers okay now all of them, that means that they're all the decimal numbers okay those decimal numbers can either be the rational numbers okay so rationals uh, which are called q and the irrationals which are represented with Q with a bar on top. Okay, so that means that all the decimals are represented by either rationals or irrationals. And all together, these make the real numbers. Okay, and they're called the real numbers because these are the real numbers that actually exist in the universe. Um, we're not going to learn it yet, but um, just for your information, there are n numbers that are not real, and they're called imaginary numbers. Okay, the imaginary numbers are numbers that um, don't actually exist, and usually what we do is we represent them as uh, constructs in mathematics to help us do other work, but they don't actually have a like a real parallel in the universe. So, anyways, we're not going to really talk about those. Okay, and that's pretty much uh, what we are going talk about today. Um, in the next lesson we're going to carry through um, our understanding of these numbers and number systems and factoring and uh, we're going to talk about um, cube roots and square roots. Okay so uh, again if you have any questions drop me a line, uh, put a comment in the comment box or uh, send me an email. Thanks.